I'm now going to process a flotation sample. This flotation sample is a dirt sample from uh, one of the local sites. It dates to about AD 700, which is about 1300 years ago. The first thing I'm going to do is measure out a, a liter of the material that's in this bag so we can go ahead and pour it in water and do the flotation. So we then fill up this bucket with water. And I've got my sample right here and I'm going to pour it in. And I can already see that some charred burned plant bits are floating on the surface. Stir it a little bit to help break up the dirt clumps. And now I'm going to pour it through this wetting veil, which is suspended over a piece of window screen. You can see that quite a few charred black burn bits have already been caught up in the wetting veil. I'm going to add more water and do this one more time. We're actually going to still continue to capture some of the, the plant materials that have been released by stirring it up and adding more water. So that's a fairly clean sample. Now what we do is we, we take it out of the screen and we hang it to dry for a little while. And then when it's dry, that's what goes under the microscope and we search for identifiable plant parts. So there it is. And there we are. And the, hev and the material in the bottom of this gets uh, processed by archaeologists. They're looking for ceramic sherds or little bits of rock or other potential artifacts, maybe beads. So this gets processed as well for other, other material culture items. Okay, now our sample is dry and I have it spread out on a plate here and I'm getting ready to look at it through the microscope. My tools are simple. They're a paintbrush, a little tweezer, and a little probe so I can move things around. What I'm starting to see is some of the woods that were used for the fire in the hearth. I can see juniper wood and pinyon wood. These woods would have been quite common around this area in prehistory as they are today. What I'm really looking for are reproductive parts and I've come across a couple. This one is a little cupule. It's a pocket of a corn cob that was probably used as a fuel source. So this was not eaten. This is the leftover cob after they've taken the kernels off that would have been tossed into the fire to help get the fire started. This one, this large one at the top of the screen, is actually a corn kernel. It's, I can see the embryo depression. It looks just like a corn kernel of today. This one accidentally got burned. It may have, they may have been preparing it, per parching it for dinner, and it popped out and fell into the fire. So we actually have the kernel as evidence of the food product they were preparing. This little seed up here is 
a either a goose foot or a pigweed seed. It's interesting that it's associated with the corn because these would have been weeds in maize fields, in corn fields. And so people would have capitalized on eating these weeds. They would have picked the greens and cooked them up like spinach. And then they would have harvested the seeds later in the summer and eaten them as a food product as well. One more interesting fall plant. This is a piece of a sunflower seed. It's actually the, the striped part that's the outside that you take off to get to the seed on the inside. That's a fall available resource. So it's, we're starting to get a story here of when this meal may have been cooked. And this one here, this last little seed that I could see is a, a ground cherry or husk tomato seed. It's inside of a little tomato-like fruit. We call it wild tomatillos. And this is also a late summer fall ripening resource. So this particular meal cooked 1300 years ago may have been cooked in the fall with some wild plants and maize, corn, and also the use of the cobs as fuel, uh, as well as the pinion and juniper wood of the area. So this particular flotation sample has a great story to tell.